Hey friends, Ken Hovind did one of those whack an atheist videos against me a while back and it was inane as you might expect. Uh, Hovind is one of those people there's no point in debating. There were a couple of things he mentioned though that are classic creationist tropes so I figured hey sure let's mention those and go over why they're so bad. Um, so first thing he doesn't actually debate anything. Um, instead, what he chose to do is to bash away at Ernst Haeckel. It's hard to believe, I know, but actually I am not a 19th century embryologist. So it was kind of peculiar that he didn't, he didn't go after a single thing I said. It was entirely after Ernst Haeckel. Um, the thing is, I strongly disagree with Haeckel's interpretation of the facts, as do most modern biologists. So it's like, okay, you're, you're strawmanning me. I really don't agree with Haeckel, so why are you going on and on about this? Anyway, it's familiar. I've gotten into many debates with creationists where they just ignore what expertise I have to go off on a tangent to something that they feel is safer for them to talk about to avoid any informed criticism. So he practices a false dichotomy, pairing his literalist interpretation of the Bible against a 150-year-old discarded obsolete theory from Ernst Haeckel. Um, we reject both. They're both wrong. But clearly what he's planning to do is present the scientific evidence against Haeckel and therefore we are supposed to cheerfully accept the Bible nonsense. So, yeah, that was his strategy. It didn't work. I'm just saying both of them are foolish. Okay. Uh, one thing he does is he de-emphasizes the point that it wasn't creationists who shot down Haeckel. It was the scientists. Scientists who think creationism is entirely false. He cites, for instance, the work of Michael Richardson, um, who photographed embryos to show the inaccuracies in Haeckel's own work. Uh, but he doesn't let you know that Richardson himself fully accepts evolutionary theory and has no use for biblical creationism. I've corresponded with him. I know this is just not the way he thinks. Okay, and then Hoven makes the same logical error he accuses evolutionary biologists of making. Uh, he claims that biologists mistake their interpretations of the facts for the facts themselves. Okay. But his entire argument rests on the assumption that his interpretation of the facts displaces the facts, that he can disregard the facts because he's got this Bible thing to support his views. Uh, so he's going to dismiss Haeckel's claim and then use that dismissal to argue that the facts don't exist. It's, it's a very sneaky and kind of obvious and not very useful approach to the problem. So the similarities between any two embryos, vertebrate embryos, are real. And they've been a puzzle to scientists for at least a couple hundred years. So um, the question is, why do all vertebrate embryos have tails, for instance? Even those of us who lack them as adults. You don't get to duck the question by claiming that him, human embryos don't have tails. This is an objective fact that has been determined over and over again. But his argument there is that human embryos don't have a tail. What they have instead is only an extension of the backbone, which is what a tail is. It's, it's a really weird kind of argument he's making. Okay. Similarly, many of his arguments are superficial disagreements about terminology. Uh, the pharyngeal arches, for instance, are often called gill pouches 
or gill slits. They aren't gills. They were named that because they kind of look like the gills of fish, but they're not. They're not respiratory structures at all. The embryo never breathes through them. Uh, that, he thinks, is a major strike against it because he announces several times that embryos never breathe through their gills, which is true, which is something we know. That's why we're not flat out calling them gills. We're calling them something that kind of looks like gills. That's that's kind of the the gist of the colloquial terminology we're using. Okay, what they are, what the pharyngeal arches are, are these these complex tissue complex tissues that get co-opted and modified to make cartilages and glands and blood vessels and things like that. Um, but it's still a legitimate question: Why, instead of building ear bones and jaw bones and thymus glands in situ, right in the place where they're going to be in the adult, do they form from these sort of general tubes in the cervical region of the animal and then migrate to their final destinations where they're modified to make these different structures? That's a real question. That's an interesting question. Uh, but again, Hovind is not a curious sort of person. So he kind of pretends the question doesn't exist. Um, you don't get to provide an answer by throwing away all of embryology and anatomy to say that they don't exist. And that's basically what he does. Um, maybe a lesser point, but I, I still think it's an important one, is that Hoven gets the history wrong. He attributes Darwin's emphasis on embryology as the strongest class of facts in support of his theory to Ernst Haeckel. Haeckel wrote after Darwin wrote that edition of The Origin of Species. Um, it wasn't from Haeckel at all. Uh, Darwin cited the observations of vertebrate embryos made by Carl Ernst von Baer he was the fellow who first noticed the striking similarities of early embryos and vertebrates. Um, Darwin's argument was not based on Haeckel's theories, but instead on von Baer's observed facts. That's kind of a crucial, important sort of distinction to make. Uh, von Baer published his observations and his explanations for them in 1828, so, you know, like 50 years, 40 or 50 years before Haeckel gets around to coming up with his ideas. Uh, and he published them long before Darwin published his work as well. So Haeckel's theory was refuted 40 years before Haeckel came up with it. It was actually a modified version of some ideas that have been floating around in the German philosophical community for quite a while, uh, which von Baer thoroughly repudiated. Uh, this was a community of philosophers that von Baer actually despised and railed against them frequently. And so, yeah, he was arguing against this whole thing. The guy who argued against Haeckelian rep uh, recapitulation is the guy Darwin cited not Heckel. Kind of an important distinction. Okay, also von Baer's explanation for the similarities is fully compatible with our modern understanding of evolution and development. Okay, von Baer thought that recapitulation theory was nonsense, as do modern biologists. He did not claim that embryos pass through the adult stages of ancestral forms, as Haeckel did. He thought early embryos, um, he thought early embryos of one animal were similar to an another animal, but as they developed, they progressively diverged from one another. This is a more evolutionary way of thinking about things, although uh, von Baer was not an evolutionist. He preceded evolution by quite a bit. And I note that Hoven, rather than addressing a legitimate explanation for the phenomena he discusses, 
that is current among biologists now would prefer to a, contrast it with a defunct hypothesis from 1870. You know, this is, this is just another giveaway that he is not seriously considering the issue at hand. So, basically, here's a version of Hovind's logic. So, imagine, I have a theory that whales evolved from a breeding pair that was dropped off in the ocean by time-traveling aliens thousands of years ago. Meanwhile, Darwin proposed that whales evolved from bears swimming with open mouths to catch insects. This is true, he really did initially argue this. Um, so this is clearly ridiculous, and I can show you citations from legitimate scientists that say Darwin was totally wrong on this particular issue. I can also show you fossils of whales that show that that is not the line of descent that led to modern whales. Therefore, I can come to a conclusion. Therefore, it's obvious whales must have arrived here in a Klingon starship piloted by a rogue Federation crew. And would you like to buy my DVDs to explain this in further detail? This is what Hovind is doing. Setting up two contrary but equally ridiculous hypotheses and only criticizing one of them and expecting us to believe the other one is legit. Okay, so it, it's silly stuff. He's, he's all wrong and everything. But I do have to muddy the water a little bit. It isn't just creationists like Hovind who treat Heckel's ideas as evolutionary gospel. They were popular in their time and still saturate our culture. To name just a couple of examples, uh, Dr. Benjamin Spock's baby book is soaking in Heckelian rec recapitulation. Uh, Spock literally argues by analogy that babies develop sequentially through their ancestors' behavior. This is embarrassing nonsense. None of it is true. Yet it is the guidebook our parents and grandparents, and nowadays great-grandparents, use to raise us. Okay, a more contemporary example is the work of the physicist Paul Davies who has been stalking the National Cancer, Cancer Institute for years with the idea that cancers are atavisms, reversions to the life of ancient, free-swimming, single-celled eukaryotic ancestors. He even cites Heckel as an inspiration. Okay, to call this idea nonsense is to dignify it beyond its worth. Uh, it's the kind of fairy tale that only someone totally ignorant of basic developmental biology, evolutionary biology, or cancer biology could vomit up. Yet he gets, he gets funded far more than I do. Isn't that unfortunate? Uh, so it shouldn't surprise us when an ignorant, misinformed, calculated evangelist for bad religion makes the same mistake over and over again. And then goes on to accuse everyone else of lying when all he has succeeded in doing is demonstrating that he knows nothing about the subject he's discussing. Okay, so just file that away. Ignore Kent Hovind forevermore. I won't be debating him. He keeps on challenging me to debate him. He offers to have me come down to Alabama where he is and debate him or he'll come up to Minnesota and debate me. It's not going to happen. It's just, he is just too far gone, too ridiculous to even consider for a serious debate. I don't think debating him would even inform the audience about anything. He is so fundamentally wrong about everything. Okay, I'll let you go there. Yeah, if you ever want me to rant to you about Kent Hovind, though, I'm, I'm happy to do that. 
I can also pick on his son, Eric Kovinet. They're both doofuses who know nothing at all. Okay, talk to y'all later.